Did you ever stand at the foot of your bed and watch yourself sleeping? Ooh, I I don't believe that I have, but I have heard <laughs> stories. Of... <laughs> Actually, <laughs> so someone introduced me to that in high at high in high school. So, did yeah. you ever stand at the foot of your bed and watch yourself sleep? I like, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's that was kind of cool, but I only did it once because I said, what if I can't get back in my body? So I, I <laughs> yeah. only did it once. <laughs> but, but yeah, I've I have had uh, I've had some out-of-body experiences, but I, I'm trying to think if that's ever happened, and I can't remember it. But now that you've said it, it'll probably happen like tonight when I'm laying down. I'll probably... Well, when you're, but when you're, when you're sleeping, that's, that's called astral, astral projection when you leave your body and you travel when you're sleeping. I do that a lot. Yeah. So that would be... If, yeah. You feel like you're flying above the earth. That's I, I, mm-hmm. I know I fly. I'm flying above the earth looking at and I go places. And, and I know when I'm traveling all night because I'll wake up in the morning and I'm so tired. Yeah. I actually, that, that, hap- yeah. that explains a lot for me because a lot of times I'll have these crazy adventures like, you know, in my dreams and whatnot and I'll w- yeah. wake up still so real. exhausted. They're so real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're so real and... Like I'll, I'll like maybe someplace I'm gonna go investigate. I ask, we'll project to the place, and I know what it looks like before I even get there. Yeah, crazy. Oh. It's crazy. It <laughs> is crazy because I've had. I mean, maybe that could sometimes explain deja vu or something because sometimes mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I think so. I'll swear I've been to certain places before, and just can't. And it almost feels like a dream when I'm driving through there, or walking through there, or whatever. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? And it's like every like everything around you stands still, and you go, "Okay, this is creepy." <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about your book, uh, "Whispers Beyond the Grave." Is that okay? Whis- Whispers Beyond the Grave is where I start to tell you about what happened when I was four years old, mm-hmm. and then how I met my great grandma, who I I never knew because she died in nineteen fourteen. Wow. But she started, she, she's the one that, that has been talking to me all this time, and I, I didn't know who was talking to me, but it was her. And she she's with me every day. She talks to me every day. Sometimes she says she wants to smack me in the head for not listening to her. <laughs> <laughs> they do dumb things. <laughs> and and then, I, then I talk about um, different places that I've investigated, and... I wanted people to have a different experience. I've read other paranormal books, and I'm not knocking them, but they're, they're kind of technical. Mm-hmm. They'll say, I, they'll say, I went here, I set up the IR camera, I did this, and if people don't, if people never investigated, they don't know what the heck you're talking about. Yeah. And so, when I was investigating, I wanted you to feel like you were right there with me. And if I mentioned a piece of equipment, I told you how it worked and, and all that stuff. Yeah. And so I, I wanted you to feel like you were there. And people tell me when they read my book, they said, I felt like I was there with you. So that's, that's I awesome. wanted to accomplish that, and I did, you know. That's great. I like uh, I like when a, you know, like a paranormal or cryptid book does that because uh, it definitely makes it just a much more interesting read for me. Like, like you said, it feels like you're there. Uh, your imagination can really you know, like your visualization can really play off that whole. Yeah, because I'll, 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 you know, I'll say what I'm seeing around me. I'll, I'll describe the sound or the smells. You know, I want you to feel everything when I'm there, you know. Yeah. Like when I'm walking through the cemetery, you know, the, the crunching of the gravel under my shoes. And then I go through the grass and the blades of grass, seeing my shoes, just the sounds. I want you to feel like you were right there with me, make creepy and everything, you know. That's great. And just so everyone knows in the in the who's listening and everything, uh on your website, CherylLynnCarter.com, dot com, that's where they can find your books and everything. And you can go to Amazon dot com. Nice. I'm on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Cool. And I put all the links and everything in the description of this for anyone listening if, if anyone uh, wants to check out that stuff. Uh what would uh what would be your your top five locations that you've ever been to? Oh, let's see. I like Ohio State Reformatory. It's a prison. That's kind of a because mm-hmm. such prisons and jail are kind of special places. Um, I live about twenty minutes from 
the historic Fort Wayne, Detroit, which mm-hmm. was an old Civil War fort. That's that's a cool place. Wow. And of course, we we love Waverly Hills. Everyone loves Waverly Hills. <laughs> yeah. Um, Saint Albans mm-hmm. in Virginia. That's cool. I still need to get there. And, and a, and a, and a place a place you can't go to anymore. Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. That was oh, really. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, place. I was. Yeah, I was one of the last people that went there before they shut it down. That's sad. Yeah, I think I was there just a couple weeks before you went because I remember. Yeah, yeah, that was. I spent the weekend there. That was a cool place. Wow, I liked uh, Ohio State Reformatory, but I went there. I I couldn't do an overnight because you know it's pretty expensive. Oh, okay. I just went for the yeah. daytime tour and kind of broke off on my own, and it was still kind of hard to to do anything because people. I've been there. Are... I've been there like seven times. <laughs> That's awesome. But so we did we did overnights. These were all overnights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to do an overnight there. Yeah, yeah. Someday. Oh yeah, it's it's, diff- it's different in the dark. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet. I mean, it's... go down to go down to solitary in the dark. Oh god, That's yeah. different. It's huge in there too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was actually, the one time I was, was actually going to go downstairs and I had somebody with me that's, that's never been there before, and we're getting ready to go down, and I guess one of the spirits down there didn't want me to come down because they knew I could see him and hear him, and he stuck his hand in, inside my stomach and just squeezed it really hard. Yeah. And I said, no, no, you might as well let me go because I'm coming down one way or another and I'm not going to be bothering you. I'm just coming for a visit. I go, just let me go. But I didn't want to tell the other person what to say because I didn't <laughs> want to scare her. <laughs> wow. Because there's really nothing bad there. I don't know I don't know why he did that. There's really nothing bad there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just being a wise guy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I wonder. That's uh, pretty intense. I know... Um, I've definitely seen that happen to to people who have the medium ability where they get, I guess you'd call it almost physically assaulted or, or uh, well, you gotta, I think you, which I, I didn't do it that day. You need to protect yourself before you come in because you know that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, they're going to go, you can hear me. I don't want you to, you know. You know, so if you, if you don't have any protection, you know, I've, I've, I've seen them really attack people, too, and you go, what yeah. the heck? What would be... You know, and I'll uh, say, what, what kind of protection? I go, what kind of protection do you have? Well, I don't have any. You go, where well, do you go? What would you recommend for for someone for protection? I wear some black tourmaline. Mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about that. I I also have a, um, a Celtic cross that I wear. That's all. But put, I, I put the white light around me before I go into a, a mm-hmm. location. I kind of, you know, and I, I say, let, on, let only good come to me. Yeah. That, that's really your best protection. Put put the white light around you. And, and remember, really if you're intent, whatever whatever you put out there, if you're, if you're looking for something bad, you're going to find it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, so don't look for something bad. So don't go looking for something bad. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. And the the black tourmaline they say is like a it's like a ref, what reflective type stone. It's it's supposed to it's supposed to push away negative energy. Mm-hmm. Whether it does, I don't know, but it couldn't hurt, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure even just you know if it, if that's what you believe and that you know you feel like mm-hmm. I'm sure that helps too. Well, as I said, it's your intent. If you yeah. believe something bad's going to happen to you, it probably is because they can feel that. <laughs> I, I swear, when we all go to the other side, we all become empaths and we can feel everyone's feelings. That's that's how they they can feel your fear when you come in. Mm-hmm. If you're if you're angry that night about something that happened at work, you've got that in there too. Very you know, and 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 that also that also is going to leave an inference at that place when you left. Yeah. <laughs> you were mad at work. You left that imprint in that location. <laughs> think about that. Think about that. I don't think about that. <laughs> no, it makes a lot of sense, and uh, and I agree with the the intent. And like even with just yeah, oh yeah, just everyday life, I try to be more positive. Uh, mm-hmm. Just put my good intent out there. I mean, it doesn't always work, but 
No, no. It helps. There's <laughs> bad days and, you know. Yeah, we all, we all have bad days, you know. If just something bad happens, it's just, oh, my day's ruined, because it will be if you think that way, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. oh, well, plan B, right, you know, just, yeah. Yeah, I try to just, if I get, uh, I'm getting pretty good at, like, when feelings come in, like, if a bad feeling comes in, I'm pretty good about just letting it go pretty fast. Yeah, yeah, because you go, what, what, what are you doing, this is this going to make my stomach hurt, why am I keeping this inside, let it go, let mm-hmm. it go, it happened, it's done, move on, yeah. Yeah. So, so your book, Fear the Darkness, is that, uh, so those are like short, some short, dark stories. Uh, that sounds really cool. Hmm? That sounds really cool. Yeah. I love, uh, yeah. Yeah. They're just creepy little short stories. (laughs) I'm working on a second one right now. Those are always fun to read. I remember when I was a kid reading some Stephen King ones that legitimately freaked me out. I mean, he's, Scary guy. And I mean, my none of my stories have a happy ending. <laughs> wow. Like Stephen King, they don't have a, they don't have a happy ending. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to check that one out for sure. Oh. Yeah, because right right now I'm 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 working on Edge Edge of Darkness, so that's the next one. And then I'm gonna do Embrace the Darkness. I'm doing three. I'm doing a trilogy. Nice. That's awesome. And so. Uh, you were the consultant for Thomas Conwell's book. They are here, Central U.S. UFOs. So you do a lot. Of, you do some UFO stuff as well. Yes, I'm a member of MUFON. Oh yeah, nice. <laughs> but the the reason I was he was consulting with me is because I'm part native, and he was looking up some of the the native ties. Yeah. To where UFOs would be, and he was he was asking me different questions, and those. There's there's the seven fires is one of the one of the teachings and so I was helping him with all that and he put that in his book. Wow, that's really uh That was that was my consulting. It wasn't really the UFO stuff. See that's one thing a lot of people nowadays don't even take into consideration about you know, that the natives saw this kind mm-hmm. of stuff and same with like Bigfoot type creatures and Thunderbirds and you know sea serpents and lake monsters like that stuff was just i mean they they considered it a part of the earth right i mean well and they and they always they always said their gods came from the sky mm-hmm. yeah i mean that, that's a teaching and i i have i have some tetraglyphs from from out southwest and i'll have to send them to you if that doesn't look like somebody with a space helmet on. I don't know what it is. Yeah. There's, there's, there's like, like a whole panel of that. Everything else looks like normal people, and you're going, what is it? And then there's something that look, looks like a spaceship lifting off and the emissions underneath. If, if that's not what the idea is, I, I don't know. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Definitely, yeah. Uh, it's a whoa. <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> to me, at least. That's cool. And, uh, what about uh, the haunting at Bachelor's Grove? So that was a documentary. Yes, I I go. I'm, I'm from Illinois, and I've been to Bachelor's Grove dozens and dozens of times. And every time I go back to Illinois now, I have to either stop there on the way over or on the way back because that's one of those places that calls you back. You know, you have places oh, that yeah. keep calling you back. Yeah, that's that's one of them. And. Uh, Chris Halton is over from England, and he he was coming over for Chicago Ghost Con, and he said, "I want to go there and do a documentary, and you you know all about this, and and you got all these cool EVPs from there." He says, "Can we walk around?" So I said, "Sure." So that that's what we did that day. We were filming, and we actually did something. We we went off. It's in it's in a forest preserve. Okay? Yeah. There's no houses around or anything. Yeah, and we actually went off into the trail, into into the forest. He says, have you ever been down this trail? And I said, well, no, I'm not walking down the trail by myself. I usually go there by myself. I go, a woman doesn't go into the forest preserve by herself, no. <laughs> I said, well, come on, let's go. Yeah, you know, so come on, let's go. So we're, we're walking down there, and we, we get halfway down, and we hear, here's your story now, and we hear tree knocking. Mm-hmm. I know what an axe sounds like. It's not somebody cutting it. The- 